Hi, I'm Zach Lewis, and uh, welcome to Off Script. That's not how I enter the show. Damn it, Andy! How did I do this? <laughs> oh, oh my god, was so wrong! Wow. You know what? I'll trim this in post. It's fine. Hi, welcome to Off Script. I'm Zach Lewis, and I'm Dr. Draper. Today on the show, we're taking a look at another round, a Danish film that's been nominated for an Academy Award this year. It is available to stream on Hulu. We watched it. We got hot takes. We're going to tell you why this movie is something worth talking about. We're also going to take a look at Kong Skull Island on HBO Max. Uh, the new Godzilla v. Kong movie's coming out in, what, next week, right? Very soon? This week. This, this Friday, week. I believe. Shoot, I, I I don't have an intro ready, and I don't know what I'm talking about. And we watched Kong Skull Island, so we're going to get back to you on whether or not that's worth your time. That came out in 2017, so I'm anxious to hear Andy's thoughts because we haven't wrapped about it yet. We're going to look at some trailers, some exciting things that come at, that are coming out. A lot of new things were announced this week. But first, when you get to the news, our first story this week's Pixar's Luca to skip theaters and debut exclusively on Disney Plus uh, for the the additional uh, no cost to subscribers. Pixar's new 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 film is not going to be a thirty dollars premium, right? They've been doing this with uh, Mulan over there. They've been doing this with Ryan the Last Dragon, but Luca will not cost extra. Andy, do you know anything about this? I know I kind of threw this one at the last minute, so I can I can walk us through it. Well, it's interesting because we're beginning to slowly get back to normal, and we're talking about it looks like you know there's going to be some actual in theater releases coming in the next in the next couple of months, April, May, uh, and into the June and the summer uh, film season. Yeah. Um, but Disney is choosing to kind of uh, keep some things that w did we're going to have theatrical releases back to um, just on their streaming service, and Luca, which is Pixar's next film, uh, is one of those, and it's not going to be have uh, any ad additional costs it's going to be like soul you can just see it if you're a subscriber yeah what's what's weird about this to me the reason i wanted to talk about this on the show is <laughs> they they did this with soul right they did this with with the last pixar film soul and that movie won the academy award for best animated film pixar films traditionally are the ones that are going to be winning the awards like traditionally pixar films do better than disney proper films um that's okay disney owns them all so what's the difference but what's weird is these films to me as, as, as a movie goer are a premium quality film. This is going to be what like stuff that's going to be a contender for an award season. Mulan and Riot the last dragon are good, but they're not $30 extra on top of my subscription price. Good. Meanwhile, the Pixar films not only aren't going to theaters, but are available only on Disney plus and cost nothing extra. I don't get it. I don't know if it's a tripwire. I don't know if it's like a, a bait and switch. I don't know why they're throwing us the better films for free. Unless, like someone pointed out, Luca might be bad or may have something uh, going on that, that they don't want to show in theaters. Somebody, somebody pointed out that maybe it has uh, a... like a, it's, it's whole premise of kids who are kind of hiding who they really are has this, it has this undertones of... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I, I think that... Um... With, we got to remember Disney is like a family oriented company. Yeah. Entertainment. And, you know, what's more valuable than someone rent uh, a $30 rental is a subscriber. And so I think there are incentives to subscribe to the service as opposed to just get it, get it for one month and do a rental. Yeah. Um, th that sort of thing. So, yeah. And it, uh, you know, it says in the article that they're, you know, it's about consumer choice that they're uh, trying to, Get, you know, to give people options of doing the the high dollar rental, going to theaters, or in some cases, they just part of the subscription. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's going to be free if you have Disney Plus already. So uh, you should look forward to watching Luca on the 18th. June 18th is when it's going to be available. In the meantime, they're adding Cruella to the list of $30 uh, premium films. Another movie we're going to talk about in just a couple of stories. Um, so, yeah. An odd move by Disney, but if you want to watch Pixar movies, there's only one place to do it, Disney+. Plus. Our next story, Black Adam. Uh, Pierce Brosnan is going to be playing DC hero Dr. Fate opposite Dwayne Johnson in the Black Adam film. This is a follow-up to Shazam. It came out a while back. Andy, you're the comic book man. I have no idea who Dr. Fate <laughs> is, and I really don't know who Black Adam is, so please explain like I'm five to me in the audience. Okay, so... Uh, Black Adam is part of the Shazam uh, comic book mythology. He's one of the nemesis uh, that goes up against Shazam. He's also tapped into whatever that like power is, ancient power. Um, I think he was the actually the original 
um, person to to like get the Shazam power and then kind of turn into a bad guy. Um, and that's going to be played by uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson at some point. Um, but this big announcement that uh, a character known as Dr. Fade pe- played by a Pierce Brosnan, I, as a comic book guy myself, I don't also don't know a ton about Dr. Fate, but I do know that he... He's a little bit like Doctor Strange. Like he's he's magical. He can kind of teleport and create portals. Um, apparently, he he kind of has had a very varied background and powers and abilities. So there's not like a real solid who he is. But he does have this super cool helmet and costume, and it's going to be great. And what it seems that Disney, not Disney, DC is setting up is some sort of Justice Society or another kind of like lesser Justice League group. Yeah. It's um, it's definitely interesting. I, I definitely thought Black Adam was supposed to be like Shazam's enemy, right? Shazam in the film in 2018, I think, was played by uh, Zachary Levi. Uh, and that movie had a lot of success. If you didn't see it, it's actually surprisingly good. One of DC's uh, really solid ones. Um, and I thought Black Adam was supposed to be like the bad guy, right? Like I thought he was Shazam's enemy but this seems to indicate that maybe dr fate will be black adam's bad guy and they won't be he and shazam won't be fighting in that film i guess yeah we'll we'll see like the we're starting to get into much lesser known dc characters so it'll be interesting to see how they're treated yeah speaking of lesser known characters uh one more story this week black widow to hit disney plus premiere (laughs) access and theaters simultaneously so in contrast to our Luca story, Black Widow, we finally have some movement. This has been getting pushed back again and again and again since early 2020. We finally have what we think is a solid release date and a simultaneous release on Disney Plus for $30. You have to pay the premium here. You don't have to for Pixar films. You have to for this one. What do you think about this, Andy? Well, it's interesting because, you know, theaters kind of assume that as the pandemic begin, you know, vaccines are out and people are going, can go out again. People assume that, okay, things are just going to go back to normal, you know, no more online releases or hybrid releases, just pay to go to the theater. And Disney is not doing that. Um, they're continuing to, you know, they're saying give people a choice, but really what they're doing is giving themselves options for the inevitability that we might have, you know, future shutdowns for, you know, the next year or two. And, you know, we have to remember other places are having a much harder time Uh, getting the vaccine so they're not gonna like theaters might still be closed in other parts of the world even though they're open here i'm excited this movie finally has what i think is a solid release date i can't imagine they're going to move it again now um because it's i mean stay and date right like it's coming to the streaming service on this day so hopefully they don't move it around too much i'm looking forward to watching this movie i think more than i was before the pandemic because before the pandemic i was like okay this is this is like the the lukewarm prequel sequel to the to to avengers endgame that we didn't really need but now it's been like two years and we've had this big drought of like traditional superhero movies in a way i'm excited to see one of our avengers like roll up a classic adventure again you know i'm looking forward to it more than i was and i I wonder if that will benefit them if like the time we've been away from marvel movies will help or hurt I, i don't really know I think I think it will because I know that people up up to Endgame were starting to get kind of marveled out and you know they were it was getting to be a bit much and so the break after Endgame was going to be uh, a good thing and so now that that's been extended I, I think it's only going to help because people want to you know they want to go back to the theaters they want to see a good Marvel action superhero movie um, with all the Marvel stuff that we haven't seen in a long time so I, I think it'll probably be really successful. I think so, for sure. Disney Plus infamously does not release any kind of streaming numbers, or Disney, I should say, doesn't for their platform, Disney Plus. Um, But if third-party streaming, like, uh, stat companies, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, companies that, like, look at those numbers. Yes, exactly. Nielsen, other other rating companies, or anything to go on, WandaVision was, like, huge. And Captain Falcon, uh, or, yeah, Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier isn't isn't far behind. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, my God, isn't far behind. So... (laughs) Disney Disney knows there's some buzz. Disney knows like there's a Marvel audience over there now, and I'm sure they're they're looking at those numbers and thinking, okay, like why wouldn't we make this movie available to those people? You know, you know they'll watch it. You know it will get eyes. You know people will make hot memes, and ultimately that's what matters. The memes matter. That's right. And, and with that, we should move into our first story. I'm going to be taking the summary on this one, so please uh, don't judge me too harshly. The movie is another round. 
So another round is the story of Martin played by Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, Mads was most recently in, I don't know what he's most recently in, but he's probably famous for playing villains. He was a villain in Casino Royale. He was the villain in the TV show Hannibal. He's a fantastic actor, if you're not super familiar with him. Uh, and Mads uh, plays Martin, a high school teacher in Denmark, because everybody speaks Danish. This film is Danish. It, 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 every, it subtitles the whole way through. There's no English. Um in 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 Denmark, uh, where Martin's a teacher, Martin is struggling because he's kind of boring and nobody in his class <laughs> takes him very seriously. And his wife is working nights and she's distant and his kids don't really talk to him and his, he doesn't really have a whole lot of friends. He's just kind of this really, really dull kind of guy. And in Denmark, funny story, the drinking age is 18 legally to buy alcohol, but 17 and under can drink alcohol in public or wherever as much as they want they just can't purchase it so i could buy a 10 year old beer over there and they could drink it and nothing would happen that's that's acceptable so in denmark drinking is a pastime for children this is the you know kids and, and teens in high school this is like what they do and because of that in denmark i think alcohol is a, a looked at a little differently than it is here in the states and that's what this movie's about thomas vinterberg the director of this movie uh, also wrote it originally as a play and he adapted it for a, a, as a film to tell the story of martin as this high school teacher who is downtrodden and doesn't have a lot going on for him and and then three of his other high school teacher friends explained to him at a birthday party one night hey there's this norwegian philosopher who thinks that 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 the man is, is born with an alcohol level that's too low needs to be a little Deficiency. higher. Yes. 0.05%, this philosopher says, is the exact right amount for any human to operate at peak efficiency because you're a little loose when you're drinking. You're funnier. You have a little buzz. You've got confidence. That's the way you should live your life. And for some reason, they all get it in their head that, hey, you know what? We're going to try it. That sounds fun. So they all start day drinking. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and initially, it sounds fun. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a dark comedy another round. Initially, things work out great for Martin. Like his kids start to take him more seriously. He's more loose. Like he, he rolls with the punches. He bounces off problems. He's got a big grin on his face. Life's great. But as you can imagine, as these four continue down this path of, Hey, we should be drunk all the time. This is good for us. <laughs> things may not go quite as you expect. Uh, another round came out this year. It is a foreign film it is nominated for best foreign language film or best foreign film at the Academy Awards. I'm so glad we got to watch it. It's available on Hulu to stream if you have the means. Andy, what did you think of another round? So I, I really enjoyed it. it. It's a little bit long and it it is slow paced. Um, but I think it's it's really well done because it's it's about um, it's about a lot of things because all these people are our main kind of four friends. They're all uh, they're all avoiding a lot of personal problems and they think that their like daily alcohol consumption is somehow fixing and addressing those. You know, they're like, oh, I'm a boring teacher now. I'm a great teacher. Like you know, like um, you know, I was, I'm a mediocre coach now. I'm a great soccer coach. Kind of these things, and it does really work. And so I think the movie is about like man's complicated relationship with alcohol i think because it as homer simpson says it is both the cause of and solution to all problems um yeah and yeah, we, i and, think go ahead yeah we and we get a lot of that where you know there are consequences but there are also a lot of you know a number of positives that, <laughs> that come from from their experiments so you can't you know this isn't like a alcohol shaming uh movie or anything like that it's a complicated well there's both good and bad yeah, that's that's kind of what was most interesting about this movie. It, it neither like condemns nor celebrates like alcohol. And you'd think normally it would kind of take a stance, but at the end at the end of the film, it kind of just celebrates the idea that it exists and that it's something that we have and we can we can choose to to partake in or not. Um, setting this film in Denmark was was really interesting because that 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 kind of loose drinking law really makes everybody a bit more liberal about it. I mean, at one point. Martin, this professor, asks his students about how often they drink, and they honestly tell him, like, that's not in any way a strange conversation to have. Here, that would never happen, and if it did, uh, somebody would be in trouble, whether it be the student or the teacher. Uh, Martin begins to kind of work this into his life, and, like, things get better for him. <laughs> it does not get worse. Obviously, you can, you can kind of see the, the course of this, right, uh, as these four friends start to get together and drink more and more things start to maybe not go as well for him, but like, it's hard to deny the initial pleasantries 
of alcohol. And that's something this film handles surprisingly well. So let's jump into the goods. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is our performances, because really, I, I hate to say the only one you're really going to know is Matt's Mickelson, but it is uh, everybody else in this movie. I've never seen yeah. in any other film. <laughs> Unless you're familiar with Danish actors, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, which, which we here on the show are not, uh, they're, they're pretty fantastic. Our kind of four leads Mads is, is surprisingly candid as this, um, really just kind of quiet teacher who was formerly a jazz, uh, ballet, I'm sorry, jazz ballet dancer. He was a ballet dancer formerly. So somebody who, used to have a lot of gusto in his life somebody who used to have a lot of a lot of pizzazz and now has just kind of become it's just, just kind of boring dude he asked his wife at the beginning of the film do you think i'm boring you know and she says well yes but you didn't used to be yeah. um and that's and that's important this is somebody who's like you know never did anything wrong just kind of chose their path in life and found that they, they've settled into a life that's a bit more simplistic than maybe they'd initially envisioned and that 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 hampers him a lot so when his friends come along and say hey we want to start day drinking because it's supposed to make us better and 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 make us more lively it's hard for him to say no that's that's a genuine problem the film kind of wrestles with um and, and it's it's presented in a really really fascinating way uh mads is great um it, through every stage of sober to drunk uh according to what i could find on imdb the cast and the director before shooting the drunk scenes would get together behind closed doors and they would have just enough alcohol to get a little <laughs> bit of a buzz and then they would film that's supposedly the deal they that never point, really got hammered but point five percent yes and, and i i don't know if that's what's going on in these scenes but like the the shift in tone from him being sober at the beginning of the film to a little drunk to really drunk is genuinely noticeable like he is brighter and more interesting and it's like it, it is it is another kind of character and it's a fascinating look at how alcohol affects people especially when they're trying to hide it from you know public view yeah that, i mean that's part of what's you know it, this isn't like a kind of gut busting comedy but it's the situations are very comical because you said that you have four grown men going like teachers going to school half half drunk and you know, teaching and doing well. And then, but like I said, they have, they, it, they, it gets out of hand because then they, well, I have to keep drinking. So they start drinking at, at school, not just before school. And then, you know, people start getting suspicious. People start finding bottles around, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's hilarious of them trying to like, you know, place blame or, you know, not get caught and <laughs> in this situation. And it's really funny, but it's also very clearly like, uh, alcoholism <laughs> after a certain point yeah our, our four kind of leads they 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 commit to this idea that this is an academic endeavor that this is scholarly they, they the film cuts back and forth between them taking notes and getting together to compare findings about how things went and how they felt how it was um but we know the audience that, that this is just a childish ruse like to hide the fact that they just want to start drinking during the day they, it feels good and they want to keep doing it and that's the slippery slope our characters start to slip down um, as as they're as they start because they commit very early to drinking all day. This is a constant 0.05 blood alcohol content level, constant. So you are constantly keeping up with that. That's not like oh I had a glass in the morning and then I got home in the evening and had another. This is like every few hours you're ducking into the school bathroom to hide in a stall and drink a bottle of Smirnoff. Um, and and as it goes and these guys do this for a month or however long they do it uh naturally start to build up a tolerance a little so you drink more right and you've got to keep up with it and and this quickly starts to descend from a fun experiment to a habit forming problem um for at least a couple of these guys but we're not a spoiler show you can find out more about that i might talk about the tone of the end of the movie between now and then but Annie, what do you think about the, the the foreign language aspect of this this is shot and created entirely in denmark it is a danish film um I know we don't really have an issue with foreign foreign films here, but I wanted to talk about how the setting benefits it. Why why would this story well, not work as well in America? I mean, it's it's different, not just the language, it's culturally very, very different. You know, it's I think if you're European, you'll probably find this a lot more funny than if you're American American. Like it's clearly, I think probably European humor is different, but just a lot of the jokes and just the uh the setting. Like I said, the they're their alcohol laws are different over there. Their schools are different. Like they're, it's just a completely different place from here. So you would, you would have to modify this a lot to work in, in the States. 
Yeah. And, and something I, I, I enjoyed about this in the same way I, I think I enjoy a lot of other foreign films is, is everything feels a little, a little alien, right? Because it's a different, it's a different side of the world. Um, you know, their, their architecture, <laughs> their, their homes are a little bit more claustrophobic, a lot of wood grains and tones. And it gives everything this kind of feeling of distance in a way that makes this story, I feel like, feel more believable. Because it's absurd. They're like four four adult men in their forties, which decide one day, hey, we're going to start drinking for science. Like, no, obviously you're not drinking for science. But this kind of faraway land where the rules aren't quite the same as they are here. That's what escaping. I think you know, escaping to the movies is all about. And this movie does that great. Um, I did say it was adapted from a play. Uh, the director Thomas Thomas Vinterberg originally wrote a a play about this based on stories he had heard from his daughter. Um, about this thing called the lake race that the Danish kids do where, where a bunch of Danish kids will get around a small lake or a pond or something they have in the area. And they'll all run around the lake with a, with a, with a case of beer. And the idea is when you start at the front, start at the starting line and go by the end, your case of beer has to be empty. You have to have consumed all of the alcohol in there. And this is like four kids per case. So it's significant. That's basically what spurred the idea to make this a movie. What 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 does that mean over time for kids who are doing this? How do they how do they function in their lives? They're drinking a lot. Well, what about an adult? How would they handle it? And I think that gives it an interesting bit of personality and, and at least some perspective for me. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to mention that uh, the director is this has been nominated for best directing as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, shoot. Um, yeah, as far as the direction goes. There's a lot of handheld in cinematography. The whole film's handheld. I don't think there's yeah. any actual. It, it feels like a documentary. A lot. Of yeah. It. It, and yeah. And it, it the, the camera's often very like sincere and intimate. It'll get right up in Martin's face when he's when he's like having a breakdown, you know, or it'll get or, or it'll be really far away when somebody is being distant, like his wife when she's leaving for these evening shifts. Um, it's it's close and it's 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 rocky and it's shaky and when people are drinking that's perfect because it's swaying and moving but when people are sober it feels harsh and and that's really smart like it's a really good bit of cinematography i could see why he's getting some some um, some attention for best directing because it's 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 a well directed film but it's not without problems uh, i do want to talk about the pacing this movie is like 2 uh, an hour 57 Andy, this movie's too long isn't it yeah it could shave yeah. about uh 15 20 minutes Oh, I, I think you could shave like a half hour. Um, I think there's a really cool version of this movie that's like 45 minutes long. It's like a really <laughs> tight short film um, that I think would work great. Like I, I like what's happening here, but in the second act, it's, it, it sags for sure. The the beginning, finding yeah, out who drags, our characters are. It drags yeah. in, our, in the middle for sure. Yes, finding out who our characters are in the beginning, getting our setup, starting this whole study where we're going to be drinking all the time. That's exciting. The whole middle bit where it's trying to juggle four high school teachers all having different, ex like varied experiences with alcohol, that's pretty boring. And then the end, it comes back around and it's pretty good. But overall, I'm I'm pleased with the direction. The music is all right. The lighting's okay. I'm trying to think of anything really worth uh, noting here. But otherwise, it's just kind of a neat little movie, I think. And I'm, I'm glad I watched it. Andy, any other thoughts? I, I hate to blow through this interview, so uh, this review so fast. but I think I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, I think I'm ready too. I've done almost all the talking. I'm sorry. You can take over for Kong Skull Island though. Looking forward <laughs> to hearing your review. Andy, would you recommend another round? I would. It's it, it's a good film. It's funny. You know, it's a comedy. It's also kind of a cautionary tale. Uh, like it shows, like I said, it, it, it gives us, it shows us complicated, um, you know, problems with complicated answers. It's not just black and white. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It's a little bit too long. Uh, but that's what we say about everything these days. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it too. I'd recommend it as well. That's uh, available to watch on Hulu. That's where we watched it. Otherwise, you can get it on premium VOD for like $8 from Amazon. A um, lot of fun. I, I do wonder if it's worth recommending to people who may have problems with alcohol. I don't have a good answer for that. I don't have a whole lot of people like that in my life. So if you're not sure, if maybe you yourself like to drink on occasion maybe this isn't the movie for you but for me not not a drinker i thought it was a lot of fun i enjoyed watching it i thought it was pleasant so i don't know if that's a content warning for alcohol or i don't know yeah I don't know. but yeah another round a lot of fun I, I enjoyed it uh now we need to move on to the next section of our episode i promise we'd look at some trailers and we're gonna andy what are we doing here 
Um, all right. So we, we have a, a number of tra trailers that we uh, kind of went th ran through. And sorry, <laughs> you caught me off guard. It's time. I know, I, I'm all <laughs> it's over the place. Time. <laughs> it's time for the trailer part. Okay, so our first trailer is uh, from The Suicide Squad, the long-awaited uh, follow-up sequel reboot, something or other from, uh, what was it, 2016's uh, Suicide Squad film, uh, this time directed by James Gunn. Um, this is a really cool trailer. It, it's very lighthearted. We meet a, a ton of new characters. Harley Quinn is back. Um, we have a new lead in Bloodsport played by uh, Idris Elba. We see John Cena show up as a character called a uh, Peacemaker, who I like to call Pacemaker. Um, and then a whole slew of tons of people. There's a rat. There's a giant shark. There's a polka dot man. Like there's all these kind of weird things. It looks like a lot of fun. It it's the trailer is humorous. There's going to be action. There's going to be a bunch of people you don't know. You don't know who's going to get killed off when. Um, I think it looks pretty interesting. I am actually excited to see it. What did you think? So I'm definitely interested to see this for a few reasons. One, because this is essentially as close as we're getting to a new Suicide Squad reboot, right? Uh, Suicide Squad infamously did very poorly when it came out, did not did get the buzz DC wanted. So this is another swing at that. Almost the same name. This is the Suicide Squad. That is Suicide Squad. So they're definitely coming back around on it too. I'm excited because this is James Gunn's essential follow-up to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. He did Guardians of the Galaxy, did Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and then if you remember a couple years ago, some tweets came out from some old, from some of his older projects where he'd said some things were particularly off-color in, in 2020, but not when he said them back in, I don't know, the early 2000s. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. Was more acceptable when he said it. There we go. Didn't make it okay. <laughs> Uh, and, and so now Disney had kicked him off guardians. They said, you're not making any more of these. And then DC came knocking on his door and said, Hey James, do you want to make a suicide squad movie for us? It's like guardians, but you can, it's been rated R. And he was like, great. So he took that project, started working on, on the suicide squad. And that's when Disney came back and said, Hey man, can you make guardians three? We're really sorry. And he was like, yeah, okay. I'll make guardians three. So this is like a weird step off of Marvel for a moment to make something with DC. This is James Gunn stepping away from what made Guardians work to probably inject some kind of similar structure and formula into the Suicide Squad. I like the look of this trailer. I, I, I like that Harley Quinn is in it and Margot Robbie seems just as passionate as ever. I like that it seems like it can laugh at itself, which is something DC movies don't often do. Um I, it checks the boxes for me, man. I'm interested. I, I want to go see this. Yeah, I, I'd like to just <laughs> list off some of this cast because it is uh, pretty see. big. Uh, Margot Robbie, Joel Kinnaman, Taika Waititi, Sylvester Stallone, David Dalmassian, Idris Elba, Michael Rooker, uh, let's see, Viola Davis, Nathan Fillion, Jai Courtney, Pete Davidson, Sean Gunn, John Cena. <laughs> like it just, Peter Capaldi, it just goes on and on. There's so many people in this movie, and probably like half of them are going to die off. And that's, I, guess, I think that's part of the fun there. Yeah. Like I didn't know Nathan Fillion or Taika Watini were supposed to be in this film. And I saw them in the cast list and was like, man, I kind of hope they get blown up in just a few minutes because like, why else would they be just barely listed here? Or maybe they're big villains. I don't know. But like, I, I like the idea that everybody's expendable. Um, that makes it, that makes it more fun. I think it, it keeps it a little bit looser. So we'll see. Uh, the next trailer we need to talk about is Guy Ritchie's wrath of man. This trailer dropped just, just a couple of days ago. This is his follow up to that movie about weed that came out a while back. The, gen the gentleman gentlemen you know what's sad i watched that movie like two months ago on pay-per-view and i still couldn't remember the title of it <laughs> and i like guy Ritchie. i like guy Ritchie a lot so i was excited to see this new trailer uh wrath of man stars jason statham as a i guess former cop new security guard who's working for like an armored truck company a little like brinks right those big armored trucks you see they'll drive to, to restaurants to pick up their revenue and then drive it away well this is an armored truck company in la and this is high baller stuff they're taking big amounts of cash and apparently they've got some problem with crime we got like heat level uh cops and robbers here people hopping out of trucks and ramming into the side of these armored armored vans and shooting them with m16s and all kinds of guy richie action and and jason statham plays it plays a guy who is no nonsense and and doesn't put up with any of it and and shoots people like it's nothing because he's jason statham right and that's what he's good at and the movie also stars uh josh hartnett 
which I'm really excited seen to in see. Ages, yeah. I'm genuinely excited to see him in a movie again. I mean that. Josh Hartnett is not a bad actor. I, I, I you can't convince me. And uh, also, Post Malone is a thug who gets shot in the in the trailer. So that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Andy, what do you think of the trailer for Wrath of Man? Um. Yeah. It 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 kind of got me, and I I'm not a big fan of Jason Statham action vehicles. Like, there's so many of them, and they all blend together. Um, but it, it kind of got me the, the action looks really cool. Of course, he's like a one man ar- army. He's gonna, you know, that it's one of those, those films. He's got a good motivation. He's, you know, got the strong, strong jaws, strong British accent. So, um, I think that actually looks pr- pretty cool. And I think it's yeah. more in line of what Guy Ritchie does. Yeah. And I hope so. Like I'm, I'm one of those old guy, Richie fans that likes his stuff like lock sock and two smoking barrels and rock and roll. And he hasn't made a movie like that in a while. And the gentleman was kind of a swing at that, but it didn't really scratch the itch. This looks a little closer, but it's also out in LA and it looks a little bit like, like, like a Michael Bay movie. So I don't know what to expect, but, um, hopefully it's cool. Terrible title though. I think, I think you pointed that out. T- title. Yeah. The Man is terrible. yeah. It sounds yeah. like a uh, Shakespeare or something. Yeah. I take the last one. Yeah, and so uh, for our last trailer, we're going to be talking about Spiral from the Book of Saw. So this is, uh, a, again, another like follow-up sequel reboot, something to the uh, Saw series, which of course started way back in, like, what was it, 2000, 2002? Man, I don't even know. Here, I'll look it up real fast. <laughs> okay, um, and this stars uh, Chris Rock, actually, as a detective who was somehow the Jigsaw Killer has come back into the limelight or some sort of cop. 2004 is when Saw started. Right. Yeah. Who's come back into the limelight and, uh, you know, they have to solve these mysteries or whatever to uh, to catch him. And of course, this involves lots of like blood and gore and, and the classic Saw traps that people have to uh, endure to, to escape. Um, and we also have Samuel L. Jackson is in it as I think Chris Rock's father, which I don't think he's old enough to be that. But, <laughs> but uh, anyways, he is in, in the movie. Um, I've only seen a, a couple of the, the Saw films. I know they kind of fell off after a while, so it's interesting that they're rebooting it. And it is nice to see that they're rebooting it with like um, black leads, black character leads, because generally it's always in a lot, especially in a lot of horror movies, that's not the case. Yeah. Worth mentioning, uh, Samuel Jackson was born in 1948. Samuel Jackson was born in the 40s. And uh, Chris Rock was born in 65, so barely Ish. old enough to be his dad it's close you're actually right i, I, I was gonna be like no samuel jackson's old you're wrong for sure but like no you're right he's barely old enough to be his dad so it actually does work out that's math I, i'm excited about this movie um i like saw movies i don't i i know they're bad films let me be clear uh the first one i actually really really like the second one is pretty good stuff in a different way and then after that they're all a mess like i i'm not gonna act like saw movies are good but they're a fun time and they scratch this like morbid curiosity itch in the back of my brain and and i don't know i think they're kind of cool so i like the idea of the, of this being kind of given hopefully like some kind of soft reboot here with something that's a little bit more character driven that's especially what this trailer seems to depict this is much more like around chris rock's life a few of the saw movies did that they were like oh well this like saw three was that way this is about donnie Wahlberg and and uh what's going on in his life but really what it is is just an excuse for you to be able to follow some poor soul through a series of jigsaw traps this almost looks like i hope looks like the opposite way it's really like a character film and also jigsaw is a problem like also saw saw traps you know and that's what a good horror that's what a good horror movie does the best horror movies don't don't actually need like the bad guy the best horror movies stand on their own because the characters within are so interesting and engaging you don't actually need them to be running around getting scared that's just kind of a perk and and that's what i hope is going on in spiral from the book of saw so we'll see it also looks like it has plenty of traps and goofy you know saw stuff so i i hope there's some passion in the franchise here for whatever they're doing and it it turns into something i really do yeah i'm i'm uh interested in seeing it for sure definitely and with that we should move on to our final review of the episode andy has graciously agreed to take the summary on this andy please take it away kong skull island so this is the 2017 follow-up to uh the godzilla movie which i think was just a few years before this is uh, obviously a film about King Kong, which is part of this larger monster verse uh, that they're attempting 
looking to put together. Uh, it has a really good cast. Uh, stars Tom Hiddleston, Samuel L. Jackson, Brie Larson, John C. Riley, John uh, John Goodman, and more. Uh, at the beginning, we meet uh, John Goodman's character, uh, Bill Randa, who's uh, a lobbyist or a contractor with the government, and he uh, he convinces them that there is this undiscovered island in the South Pacific that no one knows about, and they better get there before the Russians do, so they can uh, you know find whatever's there. And uh, they don't really give a lot of details, and they're kind of <laughs> hush on what they expect to find, but uh, they they get their approval and they get their military escort to go to this mysterious island. Naturally, everything goes wrong. Along the way, though, we meet uh, Brie Larson, who is a photog- uh, Pulitzer Prize winning photographer. Tom Hiddleston, who's uh, kind of a tracker or hired gun from former RAF uh, British intelligence officer. And uh, Samuel L. Jackson, who's the uh, kind of military, American military leader with uh, a whole bunch of uh, you know Marines at his back. They get to the island uh, they fly through a some sort of hurricane they get there and after not too long they start making a lot of noise and they uh, attract the attention of one king kong who uh, isn't real happy about these choppers in his <laughs> in his backyard uh, there's a lot of destruction and mayhem and eventually we discover there's lots of other uh big monsters on, on the island and the crew uh, is grounded and they have to make their way kind of across the island to event to the landing zone which they only have three days to get to um otherwise they're not going to be picked up uh so that's our that's our our setup um zach what'd you think so when this movie came out it got a surprising amount of like well it wasn't actually critical hate it was almost the opposite people were like hey this movie's not so bad that's what i remember hearing I remember being at the movies when it was out, like walking by it at the movie theater and looking at it and being like, huh, Kong Skull Island. Maybe. I actually really liked uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong. I thought that movie was underrated. Uh, starring Adrian Brody and Peter and uh, Naomi Watts and Jack Black um, yep. back in like 2005 or something. Um, that movie I, have was good, co- <laughs> I have a good story about that. Do you <laughs> really? It, but, uh, go, go ahead. I, I would like to hear that before this episode <laughs> is over, maybe at the end. Um, yeah. yeah, so so I actually really like that movie. The, the, like the King Kong story I actually think is really cool. And this was a spin on it, right? It's different. And it's like set during Vietnam, kind of. Not really, though. It's probably modern times. And like, there's just, there's a cool angle to it. And, and I heard it wasn't that bad. And I went and saw Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and was disappointed by that movie. That was underwhelming. So I thought, okay, this movie wasn't supposed to be that bad. I'll go check out Kong Skull Islands on HBO Max. It's where we watched it. I was not a fan. Um, and then there's parts of this movie I like. There's parts I like, but I think it has way too many characters and it does a really poor job of establishing setting. And I think I just, I got on this little like reverse hype train where I was like, wait, this is supposed to be better than Godzilla. And I like the last King Kong movie. Maybe this one will be good. And I put it in a box where it's not supposed to be. And I expected something that it isn't. So I think it's, good for certain people one for me i'm excited to talk about what works in it though because i think there's some actually really good filmmaking well i actually really really enjoyed it Did I, you really? I, oh, man. I think it, i think it checks a lot of uh you know monster movie but like i mean when you go to see a monster movie like you're going to see big yes. monsters fight each other like it's not yep. it's not that deep um and it checks all those boxes it's a little again it's a little bit too long it's a full two hours it could probably shave uh 20 minutes or so um but i feel that way almost about almost every film but there's it's just a big cast a lot of star star power you got good effects you got cool monsters uh there's a lot of action there's a lot of humor john c Riley's uh is kind of the comic relief and he does his thing and he's, it's really funny. Um, so yeah, I actually, I really enjoy it. <laughs> so wh- wh- where do you want to jump in on this thing? I'll, I'll, I'll offer critique as we, as we find it. Um, well, let's talk about, about our plot. So this is, this is a lot different from a lot of other setups. Um, someone well in in like the original king kong they bring him to new york or whatever and this we're going go out to his island to find uh him and it's this you know an uncharted island we don't know what's out there we just know no one else has found it we want to you know maybe there's treasure or resources or or who knows what um so i i mean i think the the setup is good like i said it helps having a good cast john goodman is the uh you know very passionate uh, researcher wants to get out there and then Samuel L. Jackson is the command military commander who's just like there to do a job and you know 
Yeah, like we, we were supported by a really, really good cast in this movie. Maybe better than the, the movie deserves in some cases because one of my big critiques was it doesn't feel like anybody gets enough screen time. Like they're all so good. Like you, you could have a whole Kong movie where Samuel L. Jackson is the main character or you could have a whole Kong movie where John Goodman is the main character or Brie Larson or Tom Hiddleston or Corey Hawkins or Toby Kebbell or Shea Whit like there's a bunch of good names in here. And because the movie's only two hours and you've got to juggle all these characters, everybody only gets a few scenes and, and in a way that's charming, it makes it feel grand to me. I, I wanted to see more. I wanted, I wanted more of John Goodman as kind of this shrewd capitalistic adventurer kind of guy who's telling people about this Island that you've, we've got to go check out or, or his assistant, Corey Hawkins, who was uh, uh, great in, um, uh, Oh my gosh, Black Klansman, who who is featured in this film, is kind of this like wallflower, you know, nerd nerd with glasses. Tom Hiddleston plays this really interesting adventurer, James Conrad, who's going out there with him. But through the through the entire first act, he gets like ten lines. Like he barely speaks. Like he's barely in the movie. And Samuel mm -hmm. Jackson is great as this uh, very uh, like war mongering captain mm -hmm. who's determined to save his guys, but also to defeat Kong but single-handedly yes but he also gets total tunnel vision and is reduced to kind of a one-note character and like i i wanted more flesh there because you're right it's a monster movie but like i don't think our characters should necessarily be i don't know like i'm just i'm just not I just I, something. I, yeah i don't know i just don't expect much more from this kind of movie like you get the stars they get some decent half decent lines um I, I'm not expecting a whole lot of like deep characters or character development or tragic backstories or any of that. It's a, <laughs> it's about the bot. So uh, this is actually a good time for me to tell my uh, King Kong story. Yeah. So uh, back, I think what was it? 2002, 2003 or four, somewhere like that. That's when the kind of older one came out. 2005. Came 2005. Out. So I went and saw it with, with a group of friends and uh, we get not 30 seconds into the movie. And my friend Robert from the back row goes, I want to see the monkey. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, we we're like not even a minute into it. It's like, a, you know, come on, it's going to happen at some, right. point, at some point. It's, good. it's a minute though in that movie. But sure. that's what, that's what, pe pe that's what we go to see. We're here to see monsters. We're here to see monster fights. We're here to see, you know, grizzly deaths at the hands of the monsters. And then people, some people escape, some people don't. Um, I was going to say similar to, the king of the monsters movie this has a random chinese actor actress in it as well who's again just kind of there to i guess uh, to appeal to the uh chinese audience uh, and that is uh jing tian who plays san and just has a handful of lines um huh. similar to uh zhang ji uh it was in king of the monsters uh, and again just w a weird international cl uh, cast yeah uh, definitely some interesting choices in the cast too some of our kind of like lesser soldiers are not just nobodies like some of them are people you've seen in other tv projects so that was kind of odd but i you know again it's nothing wrong with the big varied cast i just wish everybody got some due attention but like you're right this is a monster movie by god let's talk about the monsters right yeah. so we get to the island <laughs> things things go awry our characters get on land this is when we discover kong this is a very different kong than we saw in peter jackson's king kong or previous this kong is huge first off he is very large and he is towering and he is mad at everything <laughs> like he's constantly anger kong and that was pretty cool his introduction <laughs> like to, to our characters was pretty sweet i liked it i didn't like necessarily where he goes kong is given kind of this other antagonist on the island think a little like jurassic park 3 when, it did remind uh, me a little bit of Jurassic Yeah, Park. our Yeah, because our characters all show up and Skull Island like has been visited by ships in the past. There's everything from like old colonial warships to like Vietnam jet planes and like all kinds of stuff. There's wash up on this island. It's, it's like the Bermuda Triangle out there. And Kong has lived through all of this. And also these other creatures out there like the T-Rex in, in, in Jurassic Park are also there. So Kong has to deal with those also this new threat of these people the people are scared of kong so there's a bit of an ecosystem happening here and that's that's an important distinction for our characters to to make because there's a lot of characters and everybody's got different opinions on how we should treat kong right yeah yeah absolutely like there there's you know the commander kind of goes 
uh, he just kind of goes off on this mission that he has to just destroy this this thing before <laughs> before we can leave. Other people they, uh, are in reverent to it. We do meet some uh, natives, which I think are pretty interesting. That they don't really speak, but they they have really excellent makeup and you know that that their faces are painted. They got the, there's this whole color scheme going on, and they are kind of in reverence as you know Kong is their protector. He protects them from you know worse things on the island. Yeah, Kong is Kong is God on the island, as John C. Riley's character explains. Uh, funny, funny thing. I'm pretty sure about this about those those indigenous peoples. By the way, I need to look up the trivia to be sure. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is the movie where they, and rather than like go out and cast a specific group of of uh, like indigenous peoples or a specific like race of characters to to represent them, I, I'm pretty sure they did an open casting for like people of all walks of life. They got people from all over the world to play these natives. So they look really varied. Like the yeah. natives look really like unique because all of them look so different. And it's like, who are these people? Like there's, you know, and, and that's, it does a good job of building towards kind of the history of skull Island because every, you know, they could all be people who washed up there on the shore, people who got left behind survivors. Like it's, it's kind of unclear. Uh, John C. Riley, like you said, plays our comedy relief as a uh, Vietnam fighter who ended up, crashed on skull island has somehow survived after 28 years out there he's a lot of fun um i i, I think the visuals of, of skull island are really great it looks great um there's a, there is a lot of cgi and green screen and i think that hurts it and i'll get to that in a minute but there's also a lot of really fantastic monster smash and set pieces that's something that director jordan boat roberts got really well like there, there's there's moments that look awesome on screen Ta uh, uh, that's, what Ta <laughs> that's what we're that's what we're here for at Seeing one point, Tom Hidd yeah, dude. At one point, Tom Hiddleston is running through like this green ga gassy swamp with a katana swinging at bugs in slow motion, and it's like the greatest shot ever. <laughs> but otherwise, the rest of the scene just looks okay. Like, and and there's little poignant set piece moments that they really nailed that I think are really sensational in this movie. Yeah, they're like I was gonna say the the effects are very good. Yeah, there's a lot of action. Like I said, there's big monsters. There's uh, the cast is good. There's almost too many in the cast. Um, yeah, I, I think you you start to suffer from not enough screen time for everyone. I was going to say this movie reminds me of a couple of other movies, and I and I think there's some references to to things. Um, the two that stick out. First of all, uh, I think Tom Hiddleston's character Conrad is a allusion to Heart of Darkness. Um, I thought that too. Yeah, Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. Yeah, which of course, and at one point they get on a boat and they're going up river, which is also you know, part of heart of darkness, which also then reminds me of apocalypse now, which I think is also kind of, uh, um, referenced here as well with all these, uh, choppers. Yeah. Uh, Brie Larson's character plays our, uh, you know, our, our, our damsel in distress. That's always the thing in Kong movies. And she kind of fills that role here. It's a little different. It doesn't quite go the same way. She's also a photographer and she kind of checks the box of, um, our, our, our kind of historian character as well from the old Kong story who's running around with like a camera and trying to film everything. She, she kind of fills both of those roles simultaneously. It reminded me a lot of um, an odd movie, Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that movie? I No, I remember the trailer though. It's the same deal. Yeah, it's the same deal. Like our, our, our lead actress in that is a photographer. She's a reporter. She's out to get that story. She's going to get that lead. She's a bit of a Lois Lane kind of character. And that's, that's what I got from her here. Everybody plays a bit of a kind of a, an archetype of of who their person would really be and 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 i don't mind that because you're right it's a monster movie um so should i get into what i did mind yeah go, <laughs> go ahead time? yeah yeah okay so here, here's here's the things one the cast is too big and i thought okay it'll start to dwindle because this is a monster movie some of these soldiers will get picked off uh you know some of these villains probably won't stick around for a long time somebody will have some kind of turn um, I was surprised at how many characters made it to the end of the movie. I won't say how many do. I won't say how many I thought were gonna. I was just surprised by the number because it keeps things moving. And two, I think Skull Island, because a lot of it is CGI, it's good CGI, but a lot of it's green screen. A lot of it's not really there. You never get a good sense of setting. Like I kept thinking about like Jurassic Park three, which is not a movie you should compare anything to. <laughs> 
but Sp- but Jurassic Park three was a Spielberg film, and for what it's worth, like Spielberg has is very good at feeling a sense of geography in the scene. When they're walking through these dark, dingy woods in Jurassic Park three, they're out in the freaking woods. It feels like you're there. When they come up on a, a T Rex enclosure, like it feels like this thing that's been sitting there for years. It's rusted and gross. Kong Skull Island emulated that, but it never actually got there because they shot most of this in a studio or they shot it on a back lot and like mm-hmm. it never really hips over and I want it to feel grand and I want it to feel bold instead I felt more like the Tomb Raider movie and like that's not quite it's not as bad as the Tomb Raider movie but like I just I couldn't <laughs> get there and with with too many characters and also see I thought not the, I really thought the a jungle scenes were fine I, I, like, Man, I thought yeah, that... the jungle scenes are okay. It's when it's whenever you've got any big monsters out swinging, it's so obvious. Like you're not there. The, yeah. the actors are not there. Like they're just not. And and the, you're usually looking at the monster stuff, and that distracts. But you got to have something for the people to do. So you'll have. There's a great scene. I, I got an example of this. There, there's a scene that scene uh, in the swamp when 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 Tom Hiddleston's swinging a katana. At one point, Samuel Jackson tells one of the soldiers, "Mount mount the fifty. Get out the fifty caliber gun." Right. And in like a quick jump cut out of nowhere, <laughs> yeah, like this dude seconds. has a, a, a full set 50 caliber machine gun on top of a, a giant animal skull that's been sitting there for years. And it comes out of nowhere. It's like a comedy gag. And like, how long were they carrying that thing around for? When did he when did he get up there and do that? Was this, was that skull always there? I didn't see that to put that there. Like, it just bends the rules of what's real a little too much. It's a little too chaotic visually. And I like a monster movie just fine. I know monster movies are chaotic for sure, but like I I can keep up with the monsters. I know King Kong is on this side of the jungle and I know the bad guys on that side of the jungle. I can't keep up with the people in between and the people are the subject of the film. So that's what it got. That's what got me visually. It's a mess. I think uh, it it does a little too much with the characters, but a really strong showing for Kong regardless, much stronger, I think than, than, than Godzilla in my opinion. So I'm, I'm interested to see where this next film goes. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I, like I said, the biggest thing for me was the length. It's just, it's a little bit too long. It's a full two hours. You could probably shave 15, 20 minutes, um, tighten it up a little bit. The cast is, is too big and you don't get enough. You know, I feel Tom Hiddleston, like you said, is completely wasted. Uh, yeah, he's, like he's, he's barely... just, he's just there to look pretty. Right. And that's a shame because this was, I mean, this is 2017. Like this is Tom Hiddleston is Loki. Brie Larson is soon to be Captain Marvel. Uh, Samuel Jackson is, you know, in, in an Samuel icon Jackson. Yeah. John Goodman is excellent. Like you, you, and not to mention the up and comers, like you have some really good people in this cast and it's like, nobody quite got enough of a slice of the pie. Everybody got one that's too small. And like, that bums me out, but I did like the Kong. I did like the monsters. Like there was some good stuff there. Going into Godzilla v Kong, does this having seen this now, does this change your opinion of 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 how that might be presented or where it might go? Because I know this that introduces characters from this, but this is that movie is set in like the Godzilla side of things, right? Right. It'll be closer uh, to the Godzilla film than this, but there are characters from right. this present. I mean, I um I th- I think it gives us a better reference, like we were talking about the differences from the 2004 or 2005 King Kong to this one. So we, we get a better sense of how it is and what it's going to be going into that. You said very angry, (laughs) lots of destruction. Um, So yeah, I think I know what to expect it coming, coming up, but I kind of, I mean, it's a big, it's an even bigger monster movie. So for sure. Also one other thing while I'm thinking about it, the perspective of Kong changes in this film. I don't like it. Uh, the first the first time we see Kong, he he's he's standing aside mountains and and helicopters that he could swat out of the air with his hands. And the next few times we see him, Brie Larson is 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 surprisingly close to his head uh, for one reason or another, and she is like half the size of his head. And I'm like, nope, he was way bigger in that last scene. <laughs> it was just perspective. I don't know, but obviously they can't do that with Godzilla v Kong. Kong has to be about the size of Godzilla. It's the only way that fight's gonna work. So I was I like thinking about the, about the yeah. sizing issues with that. Yeah, like he has to be about as big as Godzilla. So I, I'm excited. I, you know, I, I'm really interested to see where it goes. Believe it or not, I know I know it sounds goofy for me to say, but um, Godzilla has to beat Kong, right? There's no question about it. If Kong beats Godzilla, I riot. That's it's going to be a draw, right? There, there will be some unexpected third antagonist that will show up, and the two of them will team up and fight the yeah third. there's that's gonna yeah there's happen. gonna be some other and that's there is an end credit scene in this where 
it hits at the King of the Monsters movies where it shows, um, you know, a well, Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidorah, like which we so it's weird because we've actually seen these movies in opposite order. Yeah, it's true. And and watching the credits, I didn't know if there was an end, end credit scene or anything. I, I didn't think there would be because there has not been a direct sequel to this film and it came out in 2017. It's been you know, four years. Like, what, what would they be teasing exactly? Because whatever it was didn't happen. Um, but there is. There's an end credit scene. And I was surprised watching the credits that it popped up at one point, like copyright for Toho and Godzilla characters and Mothra and King Rodan are all properties of Toho. And I was like, why is that in there? And then it hits the end credit scene. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. Got it. I'm sure you can go watch it on YouTube and find it. But, uh, you know, overall, I I think I did like this movie. I just expected something different. Like, I, I was told it was good. And when you tell me, <laughs> a film connoisseur, that a movie is good, by God, it better, it I better mean, blow it, my socks off. I mean, so. if you tell me a monster movie is good, I'm assuming it's a good monster movie. Not, I, dude, I, I'm spoiled. Not though. an Oscar you, winner. <laughs> you tell me a monster movie is good. I'm looking for a Peter Jackson romp. I, I want, I want Guillermo del Toro's best work. Like I want, I want good monster movie stuff. And and the director, uh, Jordan Vogt Roberts. You know, the last movie he did was The Kings of Summer. It was following three kids in the woods. Like I get it. Yeah. This is a step up. Like, and I think he did a good job for what it's worth. But I think a tighter script. I think we we got a we got a better we got our heads around you know, perspective of Kong and, and, and where people are placed in a scene. So it's not as chaotic visually. We got ourselves a monster movie. So I'm, I'm looking forward to Godzilla Kong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kings of summer is an excellent movie, by the way. Haven't seen it. Um, but I, I bet I would enjoy it more than this one. I think if I gave this director, <laughs> well, I, let me, okay. Look, if I gave this director a more intimate setting, that's smaller. I think he could get a lot of those really killer scenes. Cause he's got really good set pieces. There's really great shots of Kong swinging at something or, Tom Hiddleston doing something cool. There's a lot of these moments, but they're surrounded by too much mess. And like, I think if you reduce that and you just kind of distill the moments out, you get a much, much more pleasant experience from them. So would you recommend Andy Kong Skull Island? Yeah, I would. I would. I I enjoyed it. If you're a fan of 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 the monster movie genre of King Kong, Godzilla and all those, uh, I think you're going to have a good time. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of good humor. Uh, Like I said, John C. Riley shows up and and does his best. He's he's a lot of fun. It's a little bit too long and there are cast is a little bit too big. But other than that, I enjoyed it and would recommend. I like to too. I'd recommend it. Honestly, like it's, it's not bad enough for me to say, don't watch it. It's available on HBO max where we watch it. It's a good primer. I think for Godzilla V Kong, probably a better primer than Godzilla King of the monsters. I, I did enjoy it more than that for sure. Yeah. Um, that's not a, that like, that is a bad monster movie. It's not yes, enjoyable. Yes. This is, this is more adventure movie like than And then that is, and I would say if you have time to watch one of the two before you go into it, check out Kong Skull Island for sure. So give it a watch if you have the means. And uh, that about, if I didn't know any better, wraps our show. Andy, what are we watching next week? So we've <laughs> been leading all this monster movie talk to lead up to Godzilla vs. Kong, which comes out this Friday and will be available in theaters and on HBO Max. And then we're also going to be watching the uh, drama Concrete Cowboy, uh, which comes out on Netflix on this Friday. Uh, it's going to be a good week of the movies, I think. I'm looking forward to watching Godzilla v. Kong comfortably you, at home. I, know I was going to say, are you? Theaters, but... I think I might spring for theaters because like, you, you got to. Dude, I'm so... After the pandemic, I'm so lazy. My God. Anytime <laughs> we have to go see a, th- a theatrical movie, I'm like, ah, I'm going to get my car and drive over there and pay money to watch this thing. Like, It's like an event. And I, 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 I at least need to get back to like, you know, go to the movie go to the movies with family or something that would help a bunch. I think make it, mm-hmm. make it an experience or go with a buddy. You and I, you and I can go see stuff like that's, that's the way to do it. But <sighs> I'm also excited about concrete cowboy. That's worth saying as well. I hope that movie's good. And and I hate to say this. I hope it's a tight 90. Yeah. No, no, no two and a half hour Netflix movies. I don't need them. Like I, we watch too many movies. I mean, it's, it's to the point where we see the runtime. We're just like, ah, uh. yes. <laughs> yeah. If we see, if we see runtime, it's longer than like 110 minutes. It's like a chore to go watch, but I, it's okay. I think a hundred, a hundred to 110 minutes is like the perfect length for yeah. most things. That'll, that'll be on our, on our film biographies. Never make a movie longer than, longer than 110 minutes. 
mm-hmm. unless it's Lord of the Rings. Uh, I'm excited before I get into just plugging the show. We got some listener feedback this week. I'm excited to read it. Uh, Jamal Park on Twitter at Mapstone Park got back to us after a review of LA Confidential. He followed up after a review of the Snyder Cut Justice League last week. He said, quote, at Offscript Review did a bang up job breaking down what works really well in the Snyder Cut Justice League. And again, has some great takes. Thanks, Apple Zacintosh and Dr. Draper. Thank you, Jamal. Seriously, I actually really appreciate it. Like, I, I don't mean to sound diminutive or anything. Like, thanks for writing in. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we love doing this stuff. And and another bit of of of, of listener feedback. Uh, I got another request, Andy. I stuck it down there. What is it? And oh, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't see. I, I'm not sure it's going to be a good movie, but I told them we'd watch it. So we need to at some point in, in the future. Uh, it's a movie called The Clove Hitch Killer. Uh, it was recommended hmm. by a college buddy of mine that I made a couple short films with named Jordan Sutton. He hit me up on Facebook and said, hey, man, I know you guys don't normally do this. Would you want to watch this movie? And I was like, if it's a movie, yes. He also recommended a show, I don't recall, but I, uh, it's on Hulu, The Clove Hitch Killer. It stars Dylan McDermott. I did a little looking into it. So if we have a slow week in the next few weeks, Jordan, 100%, we'll totally check this out. There will be I, some I for- kind of... Yeah. I forgot that I, I also had a, a, a request uh, a long time ago Lay it um, on me. What, what? What do you got? What's the... I can't remember. I'm trying to look up the, the actual title. Um, the... Is it Boy's Life or Life? The the one, the three-hour movie about the, the kid who grows up. Boyhood. 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 I had a request for, for Boyhood. Richard uh, Linklater film. Several years ago. From uh, Several friend, years ago? <laughs> from Damn, my man. friend Ray. Well, because she was like, I think that movie's hot trash, but I wanted to see what you, <laughs> you guys seen thought. It? Yes, I, I saw it in theaters. So I never saw it. Um, I remember watching, you know, following along on the production and thinking this is amazing. But then it came out and it was like it seemed completely lukewarm. And I figured, OK, it must not have been that good. So I, I enjoyed it. I think, think it was really good. We should definitely at some point uh, do Get that. Maybe, list. maybe when yeah. it's a, a slow week. But yeah, yeah, that was like two years ago. <laughs> If you want to leave us listener feedback or hit us with recommendations, first off, message me personally. Don't message Andy because uh, I will actually put it on the outline and follow up with it. I think you did tell me about Boy in a while back, to be fair. Now, if you want to get involved with the show, if you want to live, live some feedback like Jamal, let us know what you thought of something cool, or to hit us with a re- recommendation like Jordan or Reagan, email us at mail at offscriptfilmreview dot com you email us whatever you want if it's correspondence we'll probably read it on the air right tell us what you thought of a movie we reviewed or maybe something you disagreed with that you want us to expound upon on to give us a recommendation we'll talk about it you can check out our website offscriptfilmreview.com where we post episodes videos interviews andy's doing out in the world uh and more content from us you can follow us on facebook where we live stream the show every single tuesday except for tuesdays when we're off uh, we post on iTunes, we're on Spotify and iHeartMedia and Google Play and all the usual podcast places. So you can find us over there. We're on YouTube, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. You can follow us there as well. If you want to do anything to help the show, I'd say the biggest thing you can do is just subscribe. Just subscribe to the show to get new episodes every single week straight to you. Also leave a rating and review if you have the means. I'd really appreciate it. It helps us grow in more ways than you know. Podcasting is a tough game out there. I think that about covers everything. So from all of us at Offscript, the home of Bold Cinema, I'm Zach Lewis. And I'm Dr. Draper. Thanks for watching.